Okay, so if we want to now go on to do our actual chi-square test of independence, it's the same formula as the previous chi-square test, the chi-square goodness of fit test. It's because it's the same kind of test. It's just that we've got more different kinds of cells in this particular instance um, because we've got four individual cells because we've got two independent variable categories and two dependent variable categories. And again, what we're trying to see with this particular formula is whether there's a difference between the observed frequencies and the expected frequencies. And in the case of a chi-square test of independence, expected frequencies are what we would expect to see in each of the cells if there was no relationship between the variables, if the variables were independent. And again, remember, that's our null hypothesis, that there's no relationship between the variables, that the variables are independent. And how we could actually calculate the expected frequencies for each cell is the row total, so the total number of observations across that row, which is that particular group of the independent variable, multiplied by the column total, which is the total number of observations in that particular column, which is that particular group of the dependent variable, divided by the total sample size, the overall total number of observations. And I'm going to show you how we would calculate that on the next slide. The null hypothesis here is that our two variables are independent, that there's no relationship between them. And our alternate hypothesis is that the variables are not independent, that there is a relationship between them. And the degrees of freedom calculated for our chi-square test of independence is the number of categories in our row variable minus one multiplied by the number of categories in our column variable minus one. So in this instance, we've got two categories in our row variable and two categories in our column variable. So our degrees of freedom would be 2 minus 1 multiplied by 2 minus 1. So 1 multiplied by 1 gives us one degree of freedom. And conceptually, what we're seeing with this chi-square test is that the bigger the discrepancy between the observed values and the expected values, the bigger the actual chi-square test statistic is going to be and therefore the more likely we reject the null hypothesis and therefore the smaller the p-value is going to be that's associated with our individual test statistic. And that's the exact same thing that I said for the previous chi-square test and it's actually the same conceptual idea, it's the same um, principle as we were talking about with the t-test a few weeks ago and also with the test of correlation last week. So generally speaking, the bigger your test statistic the bigger the association between the two variables, the smaller your p-value, the more likely we reject the null hypothesis. So moving on to our um, contingency table here, our two-way frequency table, just like we saw a couple slides ago. We can also get, just like I showed you, that we can get Stata to give us the row percentages. We can also get Stata to give us the expected values. And remember that the expected value, the expected frequency, is what we would expect to see if there was no association between the variables, if the two variables were independent. And just to show you where those numbers come from, remember that the calculation for the expected frequency for each individual cell is the row total sample size multiplied by the column total sample size divided by the total sample size, the overall total. So just to pick one of these out, let's pick the expected frequency for the forced reminder through association group for the yes bonus outcome. That expected frequency here, you can see Stata tells us is 110.6. But if we wanted to calculate that ourselves, we could relatively easily by taking the row, by taking the column total, sorry, which is that one there, 222, multiplied by our row total, which is 152 there, the total number of people who fall into the forced reminder through association condition, multiply those numbers together and divide by our total sample size, which is 305. And that will give you the 110.6, the number, the expected frequency that Stata actually gives us. And you could do that for each of the cells. You don't have to because you can get Stata to tell it for you anyway. Um, but if you wanted to, you could very easily calculate those expected frequencies for each of the individual cells, for each of the four cells. And what we're seeing, um, just like we saw on the... Um, on the clustered bar chart a few slides ago, what we're actually seeing by comparing the observed counts with the expected counts is that we're seeing any kind of relationship between the two variables. 
And again, remembering back to that chi-square formula, the more similar the observed and the expected counts are, the smaller the actual chi-square test statistic is, the more likely there's no association between the two variables. Whereas the bigger the difference between the expected and the observed counts, the bigger the chi-square test statistic is, the more evidence there is of an association between the variables. And what we can see specifically here by looking at that particular cell that I've highlighted there is that there's more people who are in the force reminder condition who did receive the bonus, the 132 people, than how many we would expect if there was no association between the variables. So there's more people in the force reminder condition who did receive the bonus than how many people we would expect if there was no relationship between the variables. And similarly, if we look at the no reminder yes bonus cell, there's fewer people in that condition, in the no reminder condition, who did receive the bonus than what we would expect if the variables were not related. So fewer people in the no reminder condition received the bonus than how many people we would expect if there was no association between the variables. So even though we haven't gone on to do the actual chi-square test yet, we will in a second, but we haven't yet, what the data are telling us at this stage is that it looks like there is an association between condition and bonus because people in the forced reminder through association condition seem more likely to receive the bonus, to have remembered to answer in the particular way they had to answer and therefore receive the bonus, compared to what we would expect if condition was not related to bonus. So going back to our assumptions now, remember that we need to check our assumptions before we actually run the test in order to see if the test is appropriate. We know that our observations are independent because that's met through our sampling design. We also know that our data are categorical. We know that just by understanding what the variables are and by also looking at the data themselves. And we know that the expected frequency for each of our categories is at least five. And we know that by looking at this um, particular cross tabs table, this two-way frequency table, and by checking out all of the expected frequencies, that each of those expected frequency numbers, none of those numbers are anywhere close to five. They're all much bigger than five. So we know that we've met those three assumptions, which means we can now progress on to actually doing the chi-square test of independence.